Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you today and glad that you're all here as we gather this morning for worship and certainly want to extend a special welcome to those who are tuning in to us online. We're glad that you're worshiping with us as well. I want to take a moment also to, uh, to say Happy Father's Day to all dads. I certainly ha hope you have a, a, a joyful and blessed day. Just a couple other announcements for uh, the mission of our congregation. A reminder, there continues to be sign-up sheets back on the Welcome Center counter for ushers and greeters, so if you can assist with that, the sign-up sheets are back on the Welcome Center counter. Also, coming up on June 29th, um, there's an opportunity for us to serve at the Fish Food Cupboard, and there's a sign-up sheet back there. If you can assist, you know, helping our shoppers get through the... Um, the, the food cupboard invites you to, to sign up on the list that's back on the Welcome Center counter. And uh, we continue to um, uh, have registration for Vacation Bible School as well as next Sunday from 6.30 to 8.30. Why we could use your help is with another uh, workshop, getting some of the stuff set up. You notice the prop that's out in the, uh, in the Welcome Center and uh, certainly there's much more that will be done um, over the coming weeks. I invite you now to please stand as you are able, and we'll continue with our confession. Thank you. Good. We'll have more information about the school supplies, gift cards, and, and some of the items then that we'll be providing for Lake Local Schools um, uh, in July as, and as we get near to the beginning of school. Let's continue with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entering the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When the crowd saw that he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother Philip, excuse me, his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as, do as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged out before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are given to speak, how are you to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father is child, and children rise, will rise up against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, not, I tell you, you will have not gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, you who are our strength and our redeemer through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I'm sure many of you are wondering just what in the world could be the white barrels that are standing up here in the, in the worship space, right? Um, I was thinking about putting a sign on there that said wine. It's a new storage facility for wine, if you, if you, were, if you were actually wondering. And I was even wondering, maybe it could, the, the choir... Um, you know, we could give them a little bit more wine when they start back in the fall so they can just dispense their own right there from, the, right there from, from where it is. Actually, that's going to be a rocket. Connor and Gavin, what do you think? Do you think we can turn that into a rocket? Yeah, yeah. Connor's shaking his head. Absolutely we can. And so I wonder, as I mentioned, I'm sure you were wondering, 
How many of you, when you don't understand what's going on, get frustrated? Isn't that true for us? When we don't know what's going on, we get totally and completely frustrated. And it happens, I think, to each and every one of us. When, when something's going on in our own personal lives, the lives of close family members, in our world and in our country, and, and we don't really know what's going on, it becomes so frustrating for us for the most part, and, and we can become angry. And, and I was thinking about that this past week as I, was, as I was reading the lesson, because whether it's politically or theologically, isn't that an issue? The thing that we experience in our, in our life on a regular basis, when we don't understand something, we get frustrated. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that the, this morning with you, because most often, I don't know about you, when I get frustrated by things that, that I don't understand, sometimes I actually lash out or attack. Do you do that? Sometimes we attack, in fact, what we don't understand. Isn't that true? Just by the mere fact that we don't have all the information, we can, we can go into attack mode. And, and I think that that's what the people of Israel were experiencing in Jesus in that text for today. The, um, the gospel says in that 16th verse, See, I am sending you out like wolves into the midst of, or sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, because they're going to hand you over. You're going to be handed over to the councils and flogged in their synagogues. You'll be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. You see, the people of Israel didn't understand who God was. They didn't understand enough to trust who, who God was, that God was a king, not, not a human king. And when they didn't understand, they responded by attacking what they didn't know, demanding something completely different, refusing to listen to the warnings coming their way. And the Pharisees were just as bad. That even though that Jesus was actually healing people and curing, it says in the text today, every disease and every sickness Jesus was curing, they're angry. They're mad because he's doing that kind of work. He's doing these amazing things in the face of everybody. It was even Jesus' own family. They thought he was crazy. Some thought that as he was doing healing these people, especially those who had these evil spirits, some wondered if Jesus was even evil. And people were trying to get away from him. Or his own family was trying to send him away from the crowds. I want to remind you that as we see in Jesus that it is in the unknown, the uncomfortable, that which we never consider, those are oftentimes the most places that we see God. In the unknown. In those uncomfortable places. God shows us this, this in Jesus, right? Right? who was completely other than what people of God, the religious people, the, the um, people of their time expected. He healed people who were unworthy or rejected. He cared for those people who it was even illegal to care for by Jewish law or interact with. He appeared crazy and evil to the Pharisees who again were religious, the righteous of the day, and even to his family. But isn't it interesting that that's where God is? That's where God resides, in the unexpected, the unknown, the unseen. God is in the mystery. Those things that we don't understand, those things that are beyond our understanding. And sometimes 
the things that we totally refuse to understand. Could that be you? I know I wrestle with that. The Israelites were God's people, but they couldn't see or accept God as the king that they needed. The Pharisees were religious people of the day, and yet they were the most faithful people in the synagogue and understand the Jewish faith. But they couldn't see that Jesus' healing was by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is it that we block out that God might be saying to us? Speaking to us? Calling us to notice, to see, to love, and to take in as God's people. You know, the idea or the, the analogy of the, uh, the wine storage facility is just a small thing, right? But what is God seeing us or asking us to see in our lives each and every day? One of the things that, um, that I think is so significant, um, Father Richard Rohr, he says that in, in a column that Jesus is the forgiving victim. You see, because what happens for us is when, when we have somebody that we disagree with or somebody that we don't understand, we usually go into attack mode, don't we? Most often. And he wrote, then we become fighters. Any of you like to fight? We become fighters. Looking for the sinner, the unjust one, the oppressor, the bad person over there. He or she who righteously attacks or even kills the wrongdoer. Roberta Gilbert, a psychiatrist, um, says in her book, Extra Extraordinary Relationships, says that even in our own lives, whenever um, we have something going on in our, in our family, in our church system, you know, um, oftentimes, she says in extraordinary relationships, it's because of blaming. And she asked, the, the major premise of this book is she asked the question, what is it that you bring to the situation that makes it what it is? And oftentimes, are we all going to project our problems onto somebody else or some, something else rather than dealing with it ourselves? The zealots, we've all been those at one point or another at different times in our lives. And as long as there's evil or blaming or something over there, we don't have to focus on ourselves. Sometimes we play the victim. It's a way to deal directly or with the pain indirectly. We can blame somebody else for what's going on in the world, right? You don't have to grow up. You don't have to pray. You don't have to let go. Another way that we deal with our pain then is, is to refuse to live in the real world of the shadow of contradiction. Some of us divide the world into good and bad, black or white. Good guys, bad guys. And we get uncomfortable with those things that we don't seem to have a good answer for. And it's in those times that it refuses to carry the cross of imperfection, failure, and sin itself. And these things then perpetuate pain and violence. Roar goes on to explain how Jesus is the opposite of all of this. Because he takes on hatred without returning it. Nor does he use it to play victim. Jesus suffers without making anybody else suffer. And isn't it true that the thing that, it's most, uh, that is most evil works from a place of fear? When we don't understand things, there's this anxiety and fear. 
We fear the other out of a place of not knowing and refusing the reality. To get to know, to understand, to have compassion for the other. For that which is completely and totally different. But as we know, you know what? Fear leaves no room for beauty or for grace. Let me say that again. Fear leaves no room whatsoever for beauty or for grace or anything good. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, judging us makes us blind. Judging, excuse me, others makes us blind. Whereas love is completely illuminating. While the talk of evil or evil people may not be comfortable language for us, I think it's something that we all have to look at. Because sometimes those parts that are uncomfortable for us, those parts of ourselves that we would actually like to deny, those things that simply just make us totally uneasy, instead of, instead of attacking, what if it has the ability to transform us, to change us and to grow? Because it's in those moments that we have the opportunity to grow more deeply into God. If the Pharisees had been willing to accept Jesus as the man of God, I think their lives would have been changed for the better. They would have met God, and they would have found healing deep in their souls. And if we might be willing to consider that, then maybe we can experience that same healing too. The good news is that in this there is hope. There's hope even when we don't want to see. Even when we don't want to choose well. Because God is a God of love, a God of healing, and of hope. And if we turn it all over to God and really spend some time listening to the voice of God, Maybe there's some hope, but more importantly, there's some transformation that allows us to change. Truly, love can overcome evil, pain, hate, or fear. We, ask, we just have to be open. Let God, and allow God to do that work within us. Amen.
we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bring healing where there is pain, and to counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. Today we pray especially for Sue Taranowski, Deb McNamara, Sarah Warren Mosley, Mary Ann Schwab, Nancy Spencer, Chris, Chuck Cater, Barbara, the family of Sally Fetzer, Jean, Paul Lucchesi, and all those whose needs are known to us and for those whom we name before you in our hearts. God, in your mercy. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh.
almighty and merciful God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 